everyone and a very happy new year to each and every single one of you and to your families and all your loved ones. I am wishing you guys so much happiness, love, safety, health, wealth, joy, friendship, and all the good things that 2020 seemed to suck dry of us. <laughs> I hope you guys have all of that returned to you and tenfold, um, tenfold over. New Year's. Uh, do you guys believe in New Year resolutions? I know I don't. It's nice to have like a first start and be like, oh, it's the new year. I'm going to do like X, Y, Z or whatever. But in general, I've never been one for New Year resolutions. So I don't know, especially I think in 2020, everyone's always just like, oh my God, this is going to be my year, especially since it was a new decade. Everyone's like, oh my God, this is going to be my new decade till, till life, till life was like, you know what? We have different plans for you. So I don't really know what is going to happen in 2021 i think it's like organizations right um if you're a company you can sit down and you know just focus on like strategy and 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 whatever and focus on a vision a lot of people a lot of times people have a vision statement and a mission statement and you know think about what they want their core business to be and how they want to pivot into different things and you can lay down your strategy to perfection but the one and the most important thing about having a company is the ability to be able to change and the ability to change and adapt to new things so if you don't have that that is probably the most important part of the puzzle so even when it comes down to new year's and new year's resolutions and stuff like that if 2020 taught us anything it is to be able to adapt to whatever life throws at us so for the past few days i have actually been going out so this is the second time i'm filming this video in case you guys saw um the introduction the picture of the introduction and i'm like why are you looking glam in like a white sequin dress and why are you not in that in that dress when, in, when talking about this handbag funny story so that evening it was actually the 30th night and as i said to you i was like so tired of coming on here just looking like crap with my hair looking like i need to take off my hat i need to take off my hat because hats i have one of those faces where hats suit me, even if I do say so myself. I think, I think hats, hats suit me, but I'm also like a migraine sufferer. So I will wear a hat and I will get a headache or I have a face that hairbands suit. I will wear a hairband and get a headache. I will wear, I can carry a lot of sunglasses, but if I wear sunglasses that are too heavy, you get the gist. I get freaking freaking headaches so yeah i think that look was fine enough for the introduction what was i gonna say yeah so i've been out and about i have been out and about and that particular night i had gone out to dinner we have this place called the arts club that has just opened up in dubai and um people who are from london who are watching this or if you've been to the arts club in london you know that it originates from over there London was the first place to have one and Dubai has just opened um, its doors to or the doors of the arts club in Dubai have just opened a few days ago and so on the 30th evening I'd gone over there I just figure figured if I was getting out of the house I was gonna get dressed up I like to wear sequins and especially during holiday season it's always it's a great time to like dress up and go out and stuff and so I did and i had just gotten my roots done that day so i was like oh amazing perfect i can film a video because my hair is just professionally blow dried and stuff didn't get time uh to film it before because you guys know i do like my my evening walks and stuff so i didn't get time i got dressed up went out to dinner came back home 
looked at myself in the mirror and I was like, I can, I can work with this. Even today, my makeup is like, my eye makeup looks really, okay, it doesn't look as good on the camera as it, as it, as it does in real life. So I won't, I won't brag about it and be like, it looks amazing. And then you guys look at it and just be like, mm, mm. Um, but I looked at myself in the mirror and I was like, this I can work with. So you know, grab my lipstick again, put on some powder and stuff and redid my makeup only. These days I've been used to getting into bed. I sleep late, but I get into bed at around like 10 p.m. and I'm awake then for a few hours, like watching things and stuff like that or reading. But I'm used to like winding down at 10. That day it was like 1.30 at night and I was like, oh, I mean, it's not that absurd for me to be awake at this hour. So I'll just sleep a little bit later. But I hadn't like had time to wind down. So by the time I like reapplied my makeup and everything, I was sitting there just being like, this is the bag that I wanted to talk about. Like literally it was like the most boring video of life. And so I was like, okay, I look glam, but it's extremely non-entertaining. You guys are probably watching this and just being like, get on with it, Karen. You're not exactly entertaining us now either. But I'm at least speaking. I watched my video back the next day and I was like, holy crap, I sound like I'm about to fall asleep. And I was so proud of myself as well because I even remembered usually, so when you upload on YouTube, YouTube like throws up a few stills from your video to have as like, your 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 box for like people to click on so usually it's always like me with my like hands looking funny and like you know some like weird pose just and i have it gives you three options of stills and i try to pick the one that i look like the least crazy in but this time i was like oh, i'm looking glam i like held up the bag and everything and posed and never use the video the next day because as i said it was just super boring and I hadn't even carried that bag that evening but either way not that I have carried it today either I actually carried another Kelly today I just carried a little beautiful gray 25 I've just come back from lunch I need to remember I need to get dressed early and like remember to film things before I leave the house but that never happens this is why I can never be a professional youtuber because when it comes down to like, you know, figuring out like the getting dressed routine, there are YouTubers who get dressed just for YouTube. For me, I'd be too lazy. I'd be like, I would be the YouTuber who like filmed in her pajamas every day, which is not too far from my last few videos. So, so you guys get the drift, but anyhow, you would have seen the little icon. So you would know that this is a croc bag and you would know that if croc bags or any skin bags morally offend you, hopefully you would have the brains to not click on this video because I don't know about you, but I don't like going and watching things or going to a place or listening to people speak where I know I'm going to get triggered. So I don't get it and hopefully this is not gonna bother you too much, but so many of you over the past few videos have been like, do a croc, show us one of your skins. You know, do a, do a video showing us some of your croc bags so that we can enjoy it as well. So in that video I had explained, in the video that you guys did not watch. Okay, let me stop referring to that video and just tell you. So the Kelly in the Birkin, you just have Birkin. So the Birkin and the Kelly are obviously the most popular of all the Hermes bags. They have hundreds and hundreds of, probably thousands of different designs that they do or have done and have been discontinued. But the Birkin and the Kelly are the most popular. Um, in the Birkin, you just have the size 25, 30, 35, 40, I think they do a 45 for traveling for men, but do they? Either way, you get the drift. Whereas in the Kelly, there are a whole bunch of different styles of Kelly that they do. So it's like the Kelly 
something or a something kelly, um, which is the clasp of the kelly, but it's like redesigned to be something else. So in that something else, this is um, an evening kelly. This is a kelly that is to be carried as a clutch. And I'm not a huge fan. I think I've spoken about this before uh, when I've done my massive Hermes unboxing. I know I did that only like maybe two years ago or something, but I look at that and I see like the, you know, big clickbait, massive Hermes unboxing. Like I just find it so clickbaity. I just find it extremely clickbaity and extremely tacky. I don't think I would ever be like, oh, massive unboxing and like sit there. And I've done a lot of like unboxing of my clothes and stuff like that as well. It actually takes away the joy of me ever wearing the outfit for the first time, just because I've like, you know, I, I just think it's very cheap. Um, so I don't do those anymore. And I will not be doing those going forward. I know a lot of you guys, you know, do ask me like, oh, do a thingy. There are younger YouTubers who do that. And that's, you know, absolutely fine. As I go older, I just find stuff that I was okay with before being slightly distasteful not that it is distasteful when other people do it if that makes any sense i just think sometimes you have to act your age there aren't too many 40 year olds that are on youtube and doing this stuff in any case and like i said i ration it to myself in my head that it's it's something that i would you know love to see somebody older and isn't like oh my god i like went and went shopping and i dropped this much money like i just those sort of YouTubers, I know they exist, they're just not for me, but I hoped, why am I going off on this tangent again? You guys know what I'm saying. Anyhow, in that massive Hermes unboxing video, um, I had talked about the Zizh, the Zizh, Zizh, however you pronounce it, uh, in different countries, even in the store, they pronounce it in different ways. But those clutches, because they uh, back flat, are so easy to travel with, so those are my favorite type of Hermes clutches. And also they aren't like mentally expensive. They are very expensive, but not crazily, especially I love the ones with like the lizard trim or like the two tones or something of that sort. I like it when there's, when they're a little bit different. Although I just find they're so common. Even this one that I'm talking about today is uh, less common, but I think if I'm going out in the evening, I'm much more likely to pick something non Hermes because especially when you go out in Dubai, like everyone, you go out for a lunch and it's like a school bag. Everyone in their Birkins and Kellys. You go out at night and everyone in like their Hermes clutches. So this is a clutch that is, because it's not the easiest one to get, is still a bit rarer, but not as rare. So I'm much more likely to like carry this with like jeans or something of that sort rather than me going to a party and and taking it because you, I, not you, I, I like to um, have stuff that is a little different. But speaking of different, not the, I, I should technically be like raising this bag to the skies and be like, oh my God, look at this bag. It's a beauty. And I feel like I've like bitched it out. It is such a stunning bag. And of course, if you've seen the icon, you already know which one this is. By the way, tell me in the comments below if you like seeing, knowing which bag I'm going to show by putting it in the little uh, video icon or would you rather be surprised? The reason I put the name um, in the title is because I feel like when people are searching, they can like find my video if they're looking for a particular type of bag. But then I don't know, view wise, would you rather like, I just show off a bag and you be surprised? Or would you rather see that? So that's something that I actually do want feedback on. So if you can put that down in the comments below, that would be great. The bag that I'm showing you guys today, 14 minutes and 45 seconds <laughs> into the video, is of course this beauty. Oh my God, you cannot 
the video does not do this color justice. The camera does not do it justice. It is just so freaking beautiful. This color is, did I tell you what bag this is? This bag is called the Kelly Pochette. Um, the color is a mix between pink and purple, and the color is called a Rose Sherazade. I'm sorry, the, I think that is a slightly better. I have the sun streaming in and sort of altering the colors of the video. But yeah, so it is called a Rose Sherazade. You can either carry it this way, of course, or you can just take it this way and or this way or like however you want to carry it. I think this croc color is absolutely stunning. Um, I love this color. I was actually offered it twice in a Kelly, but in the large 35s. And with a bag that, that's like that big, this is just too much color and too much croc for a bigger bag. So in a smaller item like this, it's just perfection and it's just so, so beautiful because like I said, it's bright, it's vibrant, but it's still, it's still, it's still small and cute. And um, yeah, you can either leave the straps open, you can have the straps closed, wear it however it is you want. These are such, such stunning pieces. I also have this in, um, in a black leather so if i'm going out and i want a plain black bag that that's um one that i enjoy carrying as well and this one is just such a stunning bag it is absolutely gorgeous and it it is that like perfect pop of color uh it's that perfect perfect pop of color if you want if you're wearing something like all black or It's a pop of color. I don't know why I'm trying to explain to you guys what a pop of color means, but yes, it is a beautiful bag. And if you have, if you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen me style this bag in a whole bunch of different ways with a whole bunch of different outfits. I absolutely love it. And she is gorgeous and she is a beauty. And like I said, these, the Kelly pochettes are still quite hard to find. Um, but yeah, they, so in America, I believe they do count as a quota bag, whereas in Europe they don't. So there's also is, okay, so let me explain to you what I mean by that. Um, a lot of bags in America or in Europe, you are able to purchase two bags a year. In the US, the way it works is if you have picked up one bag that it you can't get another for six months. In Europe, you can buy two bags if you find a store generous enough to sell, agree to sell them to you, or if you've picked up a lot of other things and they're happy to, to sell it to you, you can pick up two bags and then your quota is done. Whereas in America, if you buy one bag, you can't get another for another six months. And a lot of bags do count towards that quota. Quota bags in America does not, the Constance, the Constance, 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 however you want to say it, the one that flaps over with the H buckle um, does not count as a quota bag, but in Paris it does. So there are like a lot of differences between uh, both the continents and in Dubai they don't count as quota bags again you need to be able to find somebody generous up enough to be offering you all of these pieces but if you do and if you have a good sales associate and if you do have um, good relationships with the stores sometimes they are able to but sometimes literally even if they have the piece and if they offer you something like in America they will tell you, by the way, just make sure that you really love the piece that you're getting because if we get your dream bag in next week, we won't be able to sell it to you. So when I'm there over the summer, it's like, you know, a major like calculation that I have to do in my head, but like, oh my God, okay, now it's July and in August, the factories are going to shut down. 
they're not going to get too many shipments but now it's only june and i'm gonna be in new york till september like do i want to do i not want to like it's like a whole like stressful thing because any other bag if i bought, bought like an evelyn or a lindy or something of that sort i could you know take it back and just be like by the way bought it not crazy in love with it can i exchange it for something else and they'll be happy to do that a birkin and a kelly no way is that happening so i know in america why am i getting it the other way around in some place it counts as a quota bag i'm pretty sure that it's in the us that this piece counts as a quota bag yes but in europe it does not so one year literally all i got was this one but she was just so beautiful i was like if i don't get a larger birkin or kelly it's okay because this piece is just so stunning and so beautiful and i'm so happy i have her after giving you a half an hour speech on me not really being crazy about hermes clutches i just think this i'm sure you will agree this one is just you know a jewel toned bright beautiful a happy bag and a happy color um I have spoken long enough. This is a 21 minute video with probably just two minutes about the bag. Again, please give me feedback. Do you guys like longer videos? Do you like shorter videos? I personally, I've said this before, I actually like listening to people talk. I like listening to people talk. I like listening to people, to people like talk about their thoughts and you know life and stuff like that. I don't necessarily like vlogs i really can't give a shit about where people have gone and and stuff like that and neither do i have any interest in taking people like behind the scenes of my life and like oh here let me show you things like no that's not happening but yeah i like just getting on here and talking i actually even do a lot of like instagram lives or i do i go through phases where i do a lot of like instagram lives where i just come on for an hour and i'm like let's chat uh yeah so longer videos or shorter videos what do you guys like and icon or surprise <laughs> let me know uh any which way i'm going to let you guys go and i'm going to change take off all this makeup that i have on my face and go for my walk outside i'm so excited because we have a very few months of good weather and right now the weather in dubai is perfection last week actually it was just so perfect because it was slightly colder it was a few degrees colder than it is now i know a lot of tourists come and they're like oh no we can't go on the beach i'm like listen screw your beach we have like enough sun for me i like great cloudy days in dubai those are like my best days um yeah i can't wait for it to rain usually like we have at least like a day or two uh, of rain at this point yeah it does rain sometimes in december but we haven't had any rain every single year i don't know if you guys are aware i'm in a very talkative mood i think i've just like had my coffee before uh getting on and filming so all of you who are going to write below and be like we like shorter videos you're in luck to, you're out of luck today i mean um so at this point, I usually am packing my bags and leaving year on year because I head on to Boston and go to Harvard and do a short course at Harvard at the start of every year. This year, of course, Corona and um, yeah, it's been canceled. That was actually my last trip that I did last year. I went to Boston, we were in Harvard in, so we live in like with, in groups of people. And there was a guy uh, from China who was in my living group and he was very unwell. This is in, in, in January. And uh, when we were there, we started like reading the newspapers and we were asking him like, hey, what's this you know, going on in, uh, back in your country? Like, is everything okay? And he was just like, yeah, yeah, you know, it's, it's getting really bad. And another Chinese guy, and it actually fell during Chinese New Year, the week that we were there, a very few number of Chinese were there than there usually are every single year. And because it fell on Chinese New Year and this guy, you know, guy was giving feedback like, you know, can you please just ensure that next year it doesn't fall under those same days because, you know, you, there are a lot of people who would love to, to make it back uh, for the program, but they can't 
and whatever. Um, and he felt really, he was, as I said, really sick. And there was another Chinese gentleman who was really worried because he couldn't go back to his to his hometown because it had been in, been cordoned off. And he like told us the name of the hometown. We we're like, Wuhan, like where is that? Okay, you know, that, that, it, that sucks and oh, oh crap. And then I went back to New York and I felt super duper sick. And that's when we were hearing of like, you know, Corona, like what is this, you know, COVID thing that's going on? I remember going into the emergency and none of the medicines were, were working on me. And I remember going in and just being like, oh, you know, there was, there was a guy who was from China and I've been reading in the news, like, you know, that things are, are happening over there. What do you think? And they were like, listen, unless you have been, like stop listening to the news and like stop being paranoid and unless you have been to that particular place in China into that particular market in that particular city like unless you've gone over there you are fine and you have nothing to worry about why I have still not taken my antibody test I I don't know I was so so sick um yeah I was really sick last year and that I came back and usually I stay for like weeks after I enjoy my time uh, in New York because when I go, I'm like, oh, but I'm already here. Like, let me stay, enjoy, you know, being there and, and stuff like that. And I always sort of miss Dubai at that time just because Dubai has the most perfect weather. And I always feel like I go for like a couple of weeks at a time and I just always feel like, oh shit, I'm missing the perfect weather in Dubai. So if, if anything, this is the only like good thing that's going to come out of it is number one, I got to read a shit ton of books. Staying put because the course is uh, a week long, but we literally have to read for like a few weeks worth of material of cases to be able to go there for that one week i'm not exaggerating our our case material is like that much our files are always that thick and you have to like reread a whole bunch of cases you have to you have to reread the cases like three or four at least three times and then you know do preparations for it and there's a lot of work that goes in before before you actually go over there. And I know a few people are gonna ask me like, oh, what course at Harvard is, uh, is it that you're talking about? Um, I am part of a private organization um, called the YPO, and the YPO has specific um, tie-ups with Harvard. So there's no point in me like talking more about the course and stuff like that, because if you're in YPO, you know that we are one of the only pro private, I think, I believe the only private organization that Harvard has this tailor-made course for. So unless you're a YPO, there's no point in me getting into that. But either way, the, the course is always amazing. I miss it. I miss going back and I miss the whole experience. It is amazing. This year they decided to have it online. I decided to not attend. And yeah, that is life. So weather. I got to read a lot. I finished 36 books last year. Um, that is, I think, the most that I have ever read in at least the past decade. Um, I track my books on Goodreads. So every year I go and set myself a reading limit. I believe, I believe it was 25 books that I wanted to read. I actually got to 36. There are some people on there who are like, we read 120 books. And I'm like, what sort of books are you guys reading? And how many hours are you guys dedicating to reading every single day? I wish I could read that much. I already don't even remember. I'm like going through my Goodreads list and just being like, what was the name of that book again? Or what was the story of it? And I actually sit and write teeny tiny reviews and rate the books, not for anyone else, just for myself, because I will not for the life of me be able to remember what the hell was that book about? Or have I even read that book? So a lot of times it like really helps me um, stay on track. Why I have talked your ear off today, I don't know. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, yeah, if you have enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. And please do subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I do promise you I'm going to get the, to the 12. I know it was supposed to be like a Christmas thing. 
But let's face it, you and I both knew that wasn't going to happen by Christmas. But as they say, better late than never, I will eventually get to it soon. And I won't do any other video because I really want to do a skincare video. I have fallen in love with a skincare brand that has like, it is just freaking perfect for my skin type, for my age, and for a whole lot of other people who are suffering with the same skin as me. But I have vowed to not do that video till I get through all of these. I also do want to do a top uh, favorite makeup products and my top 10 favorite books of 2020. Not too many people read my book recommendations. Would you guys like a video? If enough of you say yes, then I will do one. Yeah, because I just feel like I'll talk about books, but those are the videos. Makeup and book videos are the ones that I actually do more because they make me really happy. Because then when I'm like reading things and stuff, I like remember to like make little scribbly notes. So when I'm like using makeup or buying makeup just stupidly and buying stupid amounts of makeup, I'll be like, oh, but, but people are looking forward to my reviews. And that's like the excuse that I give myself. Anyhow. I will shut up now. 31 minutes. I think this has got to be my longest video ever. I will see you guys soon. Enjoy.